Faith and patience have inherited the promise because I want the same promises in my life. If I'm not inheriting what you want, you are following the wrong man. That's good. See, I need somebody outside my field of vision to keep me in line. Years ago, years ago, Pastor Philip, Pastor Philip and I have been together just as long. God knit, knit us together in covenant before we knew what covenant was. I went to him one day and I said, Pastor Philip, if I believed half the things the devil told me, I'd never speak to you again. And he said, Jim, if I believe half the things the devil told me about you, you ought to be in jail. <laughs> It's the truth. But years ago, we had just we had just started. See, Paul was right. Paul said women are to be silent. I'm watching for that trap door is what I'm doing. But Pastor Philip and I were talking, and this, he, had, he had just gotten home from his trip to the Marshall Islands, his first ministry trip there. And he and I were talking about, man, you and I need to go together, and you can preach on this island, I can preach on this island. And we knew it was God. We, we had them Holy Ghost doodads, all, you know, hair standing up. Like, oh, yeah, we had all that going on. <laughs> and so the next day, I go into Pastor Callahan's office. I said, Pastor, man, Pastor Philip and I have been talking, and uh, we think it's God, uh, you know, all of a sudden, it wasn't God anymore. We think it's God. Yeah. And, and he and I are going to go to the Marshall Islands together. Pastor Callahan goes, that ain't God. And I said, it was mostly Philip. And I just... <laughs> I threw him under the bus. <laughs> and then I backed up to make sure I hit him. Now, you laughing at me. But how many of you done the exact same thing? You knew that you knew that you knew that it was God. And if your heart is not in submission to the man or woman of God that God has placed over you, you will miss it. I'm telling you, you will miss it. I need somebody. I, I, I told my kids, I've told all my kids, that when they come and they tell me I'm in love, I'll tell you if you're in love or not. Uh, you bring him to me and we'll talk. Let, just, right. I, I don't need an interview. I just need to look in his eyes. That's right. It's all lot. That's it. That's all I need to do. People tell me, I'm telling you what, oh, your son-in-laws are amazing. I said, they didn't have any choice. Because if they weren't, they would not be married to my daughters. Right. I'm not going to let it happen. And it's amazing. Beloved, the number one thing I've had people get mad at me about is they'll come and they'll say, Pastor, I love him. We're in love. I said, he ain't right for you. What do you mean? I said, he's not even serving God. Well, God understands. You know, like I'm trying to ruin their life. I ain't got to wake up next to them ugly. I ain't got a dog in this fight. I'm trying to save them. I'm not, I, I don't care about your little, every little detail of your life. Don't be calling me about what you ought to wear and should I go over here for dinner. I don't care, but you're talking about a life mate. I want somebody who sees outside of my sexual vision. My sexual vision. That's a new one on me. Yeah. You got your Marvin Gaye playing in the background. I love him, Pastor. No, you lust him. And you know there's only one thing worse than being single. It's wishing that you were. Isn't that the truth? I'm telling you what, and listen... Uh, we're going to get a marriage seminar in here too, if that's all right. Single people, listen to me. Look, I was 19 when I got married. We grew up together. By the time we were 23, we had three kids. So I don't understand being single very long. 
But I do understand this because I do a lot of marriage counseling. If you can't be complete single, you will never be complete married. Don't find somebody you think is going to complete you. They will not. They'll never measure up. You got to be you. And then trust God to bring your mate. And it never ceases to amaze me how God does it. I've had people come. I, this, this one woman in my church, we're in the middle of nowhere. Beattyville, 1,100 people in the mountains of eastern Kentucky. God's got a sense of humor sending me there. I really fit. But this woman came to me and she said, Pastor, I've, I've met this guy online. And uh, she said, I just know he's from God. And I just want, she's smart enough. She said, I want you to pray about it. And I said, listen to me. Stay away from him. Well, no, no, no. He's got the same heart I do. I said, stay away from him. I said, you mark my words. It won't be long till he's asking you for money. It wasn't three weeks later. He needed money. And she said, Pastor, I'm so glad that I listened to you. Now listen, now, now listen to me, because about a year later, she came to me. She said the same thing. I met a guy online. This is a woman in her late 50s. You don't see that in ChristianMingle.com. <laughs> My favorite is, what, what's it called? FindYourFarmer.com. Yeah. Is that hilarious? <laughs> Dog lovers? You know, find your farmers like, I'm goofy. Are you goofy too? That's my pitchfork. That's what I'm holding. You Florida people didn't even know what that was. Like, What's that? She's over here explaining what I'm doing. That, that's white folk for, for farmer. So she comes to me a year later. Now, she's, she's learned enough. I, I've got a track record with her. That's not the first thing that she's come to me about. But she's smart enough. She says, Pastor, because she knows, <laughs> I want me a man. And so she needs some help with some direction. So she meets this guy and he goes, she goes, he wants to come here and meet you in church. From Louisiana to Kentucky. I said, let him come. He came to one service and I said, that's a good man. It's all I needed to see one. I need somebody outside of my little yeah. sphere of influence yeah. that can have an objective opinion and hear from God. Yeah. And next month, I'm doing their wedding. Amen. See, we, we try to figure out how God's going to do it. Now, I'd have never figured it out that way. Meet online. Start talking, start talking word. He, and this guy is on fire for God. He came to me six months ago, one of the largest sowers to us. And he came to me and he said, Pastor, you have changed my life. He said, Since I, he said, I was broke when I came here. He said, I didn't have the money to get here. And he said, now I have more money than I've ever had in my life in one year. See, I need, I need, I need somebody. I am so thankful to have Pastor Callahan that he'll speak into my life. I need that. Well, good Lord, Pastor. I mean, you've been in this 30 years. Don't you think you'd have it down by now? No, I don't. I still need somebody that can say, I don't know about that, Jim. I, 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 don't, I don't know that you ought to be doing this. And I'm open to be fine-tuned. But see, we don't like admitting we're wrong. That's the most difficult thing about divine order. Divine order is easy until you disagree. <laughs> and that's when divine order kicks in. Because all that matters, I want what God wants. That's it. I don't care what people think about me. A statement by Oral Roberts years ago, it meant so ministered to me. He said, besides my wife, I'm not married to anything. 
Now, do you understand what I'm saying? Is so many times we get so set on what we want to do that God couldn't change your direction with a, with a baseball bat. I want to hear God. And if I'm doing this for a while and it's not God, I got no problem saying, hey, look, we're going to stop this and we're going here. I've, I've done a motorcycle rally for 10 years. And this year, the Lord told me, I don't want you to do it this year. And I got people coming saying, why? Why aren't we doing it? We look forward to this. God said to. That's all that matters. I don't care if I've done it for 30 years. I want what, but I need somebody that can speak into my life. But listen to me, stay teachable. Keep yourself teachable. And come and say, Pastor, what do you think about this? And mark my words, the things you want to do anyway, you don't want to come to him about. And those are the things you need to come to him about. And it may not be that you come and he says no. It may be he comes and says, yes, that's God. And that's the oomph that you need to get you to complete it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have I helped you? Yes.